Welcome to History Nachos. History is more than just names and dates. It is the heritage of humanity. Here, we are all about the greatest real stories. So take a scoop and jump on in. Social media is everywhere today. It is a defining feature of life in the 21st century. What if I told you it goes way back? And I do not mean the first internet boom in the 1990s. Much farther back. Social influencers, backstabbing reputations, and body shaming go back to the BC era. The original social network was fellow villagers. The first forum was a big public square in downtown Rome, and it had a wild comment section. Blaming someone for a disagreement meant actually lighting them on fire. Coins and paintings acted as the original profile pics. Selfies involved a mirror and a paintbrush. Welcome to episode 14, Old School Social Media. There are always going to be ridiculous rumors. Kim Kardashian. Kim is the queen of social media. And she is absolutely right on that one. As long as people can communicate with each other, there will be ridiculous rumors. That was true long before the rise of the internet. All kinds of crazy stuff got published after the Gutenberg printing press came out centuries ago. You could probably go to tribal societies at the dawn of civilization and still find plenty of outrageous gossip. I personally think modern social media is just a new way of conducting some very old human behaviors. Special thanks for the topic request goes to Harmony in Mission Viejo, California. Before going any further, please remember to comment, like, and share. Also, stick around at the end for bonus material. Alright, let's get started with social networks that trace back to the early days of humanity. For thousands of years, villages were fully functioning social networks. Status updates came from interacting with people during everyday life. The town market especially became a hotspot for hearing the latest news and gossip while you bought stuff. It was like a combination of Facebook, Amazon, and the grocery store. The town square served as a place to address everyone at once for announcements, important matters, and vocalizing opinions. Kings and governors could even send people to speak for them. In short, analog Twitter. One town square in particular really stands out. The Roman Forum. During Roman times, it was a huge public gathering space right in front of all the major government buildings. In the Republic period, it saw political rallies, military parades, protests, and riots. Imagine a rowdy comment section, but in person, sometimes with concealed knives. Comment trolls could impact matters of state when they got enough followers. Social influencers go way back too. Just like today, there were celebrities and trendsetters in metropolitan areas all across history. More than 2,000 years ago, a young Julius Caesar was a trendsetter in the cool crowd with fashion sense and a famous name. He was basically the Roman Chloe Kardashian. Listen to episode 1 for more about Caesar's early life, which was quite the drama. Body shaming and backstabbing reputations have also been around a long time. Cleopatra's haters said all kinds of horrendous things about her. She took serious heat while fighting her brother for the Egyptian throne. Cleopatra was attacked for her looks, gender, personality, and more. Caesar and Cleopatra ultimately became a celebrity power couple and lived together in Rome. Cleopatra was derided by the Romans as an eastern temptress. That term highly insulted her romantic choices and added a cultural slur. It also implicitly attacked Caesar. The whole thing turned into a celebrity scandal with political consequences. You can hear more details in episode 2. Courtiers across history were also notoriously catty, both men and women. 
in the king's court, nothing was more important than favor with the big cheese. Nobles were often willing to tear each other down to gain an edge, but had to maintain the appearance of civility. The court culture really got flamboyant in Renaissance Europe. Frilly clothes, wigs, styled makeup, and rampant gossip. That was just the men. At court, the nobles dressed to impress and put on a constant social performance. Sounds a lot like Facebook. Two iconic books sum it all up. The Courtier and The Prince. The Courtier by Baldassare Castiglioni became the must-read ultimate guide to putting your best foot forward at court. It was translated into many languages and became one of the greatest literary hits of the 1500s. Imagine someone making the ultimate guide to texting, with chapters on what emojis to use, how to take a perfect selfie, and the best amount of time to wait before responding to your crush. Then imagine everyone deciding to largely follow those rules. That is the kind of impact the courtier had. A good amount of the courtier's advice still holds up today. The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli is a field guide for underhanded manipulation and cutthroat power moves, complete with real-life examples. It gives a glimpse into how ruthless kings and courtiers could act behind the scenes. A solid amount of advice from the prince still holds up too, unfortunately. It can even apply to modern cyberbullying, business, and politics. I recommend reading The Prince, or at least a summary, so you know what kinds of things people might try to pull on you. Speaking of books, the invention of the Gutenberg printing press in the mid-1400s provided the first widely available speech platform. Just to be clear, Johannes Gutenberg did not invent the first printing press. Presses had been around for centuries in Europe and Asia. Gutenberg did invent the first one with a printing surface made of durable parts that could be easily moved around. He also figured out a way to make the lines consistently straight and even. We are talking about German engineering, after all. Suddenly, printing documents with multiple pages was not a massively expensive pain in the rear. Gutenberg originally used his press to print the Bible. People quickly realized they could use the Gutenberg press to say anything. Printing exploded all over Europe. During the rest of the 1400s, the printing press became widely used to spread ideas, humor, and other randomness. Information circulated among normal people like never before. It was like when the internet first launched. Europe saw a rapid advance in knowledge, science, and philosophy people began to seriously question religious and political institutions. The questions quickly led to changes. We call them the Reformation and the Enlightenment. Information is power, which is why historically governments and religions have kept monopolies on mass information. In Europe, the printing press threw a big monkey wrench into the works. Before the Gutenberg Press, normal people did not have Bibles. The local priest had one, and everyone else had to take his word for it. The Catholic Church was like the major news networks before the rise of the internet. The Gutenberg Press eventually put Bibles in the hands of normal people, which broke the information monopoly. When people began reading the Bible for themselves, quite a few started disagreeing with the official party line. Something similar happened to the news networks when the internet took off. In 1517, Martin Luther stepped up and publicly challenged the Catholic interpretation of the Bible. The printing press made Luther's ideas go viral. A serious amount of people began to view the Catholic Church with skepticism, much like how we look at fake news. They formed a gigantic movement to break off and create a whole new branch of Christianity. Whether you think that action was justified or not depends on your religious beliefs. Either way, the religious independence movement tore Europe apart violently for two centuries, but ultimately succeeded. 
Today, hundreds of millions of people still worship Protestant Christianity. The Catholic Church and European governments were tight with each other, much like modern political parties and their favorite news outlets. As an institution, the Church had long acted as an international mediator like the UN, given legitimacy to rulers and influenced people at the local level. The printing press made it much easier to disrupt the Catholic Church's power. Writers and printers teamed up to convince a bunch of people to stick it to the man. Today, people use the internet the same way to challenge the narratives presented by the news media. Whenever opposition to the Catholic Church reached critical mass, it put the political leadership in a dilemma. They had two options. Go with the flow, or double down on Catholicism. Going with the flow would antagonize the most powerful political institution around, and its heavily armed allies. Doubling down would keep rulers in the Pope's good graces, but risk revolution and violent removal by their own people. No matter which side the leaders chose, now they needed to factor in public opinion much more, thanks to the printing press. News reporting and public perception still impact how politicians make decisions. People also began batting around new political theories through the printing press. Of course, much of it had to just stay theory in order to keep out of trouble with the monarchies. Among the educated and literate, these ideas became a huge topic of discussion during the 1600s and 1700s. People sat down together for conversational debates in designated chat rooms. Many political ideals underlying modern democracies were formed during that time, which is why we call it the Enlightenment. It was like people sharing and posting political content in online chat rooms today. Probably with fewer expletives, though. By the late 1700s, even Europe's far-flung colonies had printing presses. They played an essential role in stirring up organized opposition to the British government and their colonies along the coast of North America. Ultimately, 13 colonies broke off together and formed the United States. They built a nation from the ground up around theories from the Enlightenment. Nobody had tried it before, but the whole thing turned out rather well. Looking back, we take the American Revolution for granted and forget how outlandish it was for the time. The modern equivalent would be Silicon Valley declaring itself an independent country and creating a system of government based on Reddit threats. Europe would soon follow suit, starting with the French Revolution. As printing became more advanced with the rise of industry, political ideologies spread all over the place and resulted in constant conflict across the 1800s. Over in the world of art, Industrial printing brought a boom in literature. Novels and short stories became widely published and universally read. The stories and fan bases resembled modern pop culture. Authors became celebrities in their own right, similar to modern movie directors. Even now, books from the late 1700s through the early 1900s are required reading in high school. Instant messaging has also existed for quite a while. However, the usable distance was pretty limited by modern standards. Signals using fires and smoke have been around for thousands of years, and they could reach anyone within visual range. For example, they played an important role in the opening days of the American Revolution. When the Redcoats marched on Lexington and Concord, their route was famously signaled by lanterns in a church. That signal set off writers like Paul Revere to raise the alert. Native Americans even figured out how to make coded messages with smoke clouds. They would cover up the fire with a blanket to briefly stop the smoke rising, which created an early version of Morse code. The signal could be seen for miles in the plains and deserts of the American West. In more modern times, the Somalis used burning tires to make smoke signals during the Black Hawk Down incident. To this day, many soldiers carry smoke grenades to communicate with friendly air support. The Chinese and Byzantines also created incredible fire and smoke signal relays. There were others in history, but these two spanned hundreds of miles. 
The Byzantine beacon system stretched all the way across modern Turkey to warn Constantinople about attacks from the Middle East. China did the same thing on its northern border. Whenever the Mongolians attacked, outposts on the Great Wall would light up huge bonfires that activated a long signal line to spread the news. In both cases, raising the alarm looked like the iconic scene from Lord of the Rings where they light the beacons. The message could still take an hour or two to travel, but that was instant compared to sending a dude on a horse. After the invention of gunpowder, the Chinese used it to make sound signals on the Great Wall. After lighting the main fire, they would shoot off cannons. The amount of cannon shots indicated how many invaders were coming. However, Sub-Saharan Africa turned sound signals into an art by using talking drums. These were not normal drums. They could bend the sound all kinds of ways to roughly mimic human speech. Hence the name. A talking drum easily fits under your arm, and the sound can carry for miles. For someone skilled with a talking drum, it was like having a cell phone. Today, you can actually hear talking drums in parts of the Black Panther soundtrack. In the mid-1800s, the tech boom from the Industrial Revolution created the first form of electronic instant messaging. The Telegraph. The Telegraph made it possible to send detailed text across vast distances in a matter of seconds. It revolutionized the train industry and proved a major battlefield advantage for the North during the American Civil War. Telegraph lines started popping up everywhere, even across the Atlantic Ocean. Now Europe and America could instantly communicate, and the wires lit up. A company was formed to gather all the news going around the wires, sum it up, and send out live headlines. The Associated Press, or AP. It still functionally does the same thing today. The Telegraph also set off a tech race for the next big thing in instant communication. The late 1800s saw the rise of the telephone. Next came the radio, which set the 1900s off to a strong start. By the 1930s, world leaders began using it to address entire nations at once and quickly influence world affairs. During World War II, militaries used the radio to broadcast propaganda and demoralize the enemy. Then the television came along and allowed people to actually see distant events happening live. Politicians and advertisers had a field day especially when networks started broadcasting in color. In the 1990s, the internet launched and really opened Pandora's box. Widely available instant communication basically hit fast forward on societal development. In just one century, humanity went from steam power to nuclear fission, space travel, and computers. So far, the 21st century has been another wild ride. We started out with desktop computers and email. Now we have streaming, smartphones, and cloud computing. Even though modern selfies started with the cell phone, the general concept is not new. Profile pics and selfies date back to ancient times in the form of paintings, sculptures, and coins. Ever since the earliest civilizations, Rulers have often put their faces on coins and made sculptures of themselves. Most people would never see their leader in person, so it was a great way to conduct PR. They were profile pics people had to see every day. Paintings have been around since caveman times, but they did not become very realistic until the Renaissance. Elements like color, shading, and perspective rose to exquisite levels. Some of the paintings from the Renaissance look almost like photos. For the rich and powerful, art became a way to immortalize themselves. Look in any high school history textbook, and I just about guarantee you will see paintings and statues of leaders. Those are their permanent profile pics. Paintings have also long served as selfies. In fact, self-portraits are a well-established genre of art. Paintings eventually became a dating tool. Average people could get miniature portraits as a special gift for their sweethearts. 
The wealthy would even commission painters to visit and paint potential spouses. The paintings acted like dating profile pics. Politicians especially used the service to save a bunch of long trips. Imagine using priceless paintings by a famous artist to decide which way to swipe on Tinder. That is the definition of extravagance. Always take a portrait with a grain of salt, because people were known to ask the artist to paint them in the most favorable way. When paying for a portrait, you have the right to ask the painter not to include every blemish. Modern photographers do the same thing with Photoshop. I would not be surprised if a few people got catfished by skewed portraits. Even texting goes way back. It was not exactly instant, but people communicated by text via letters carried back and forth. They would write to each other about many subjects, like business, politics, and everyday life far away. John and Abigail Adams famously corresponded while he was on diplomatic duty in Europe. Even after the telegraph came along, people kept writing letters for longer messages and personal things. Just like modern texting, plenty of letters were of a more romantic nature. Let's just say there are many ways to describe attraction, and quite a few not-safe-for-work things can fit in an envelope. Surprisingly enough, emojis date back thousands of years. People have been communicating words and feelings with cute little images since ancient times. When they are carved inside an old pyramid, we just like to call them hieroglyphs. Some things never change. Even with instant communication, we are all just people. The internet has made everything faster, but human nature is a powerful thing. We still widely share ideas, art, and humor. We still bully others and judge people by their looks. Above all else, we still connect with each other and try to make the world a better place. We are just starting to discover what we are capable of in the internet age. Just like the printing press and the telegraph, the internet has started an era of incredible knowledge. I personally have high hopes for the future of humanity. You have officially made it to the bonus material, the guacamole on these history nachos. Stick around to hear about the aftermath, modern relevance, or anything else we decide to throw in. Despite all the changes brought about during human history, the original tribe and village social network remains active today. It did not go the way of MySpace. Rural areas all over the world still revolve around relatively small groups of people who help each other. Even in fully industrialized first world nations, you can go out to small towns and find a similar dynamic. If you are in an urban area, there is still a pretty good chance you have close friends and family who watch out for each other. When emergencies happen in highly populated places, people still band together like the old days. A great example is the Cajun Navy in Louisiana. For those of you unfamiliar with the Cajun Navy, it is a term for people with boats who help others during hurricanes and floods. If you are curious about how a talking drum sounds and looks, in the description I have linked a video of a master playing it. The way he can bend the sound is incredible. In my opinion, he does with the drum what Jimi Hendrix did with the guitar. I also found a couple of videos that show what the beacon relays looked like. One is the beacon sequence from Lord of the Rings. The other is the opening scene of Mulan. Both are linked below. Combining instant communication with science and free speech is one of humanity's greatest ideas. Think about the level of advancement in medicine, technology, and knowledge since the invention of the telegraph. Even with the problems of the modern world, this is one of the best times to ever live. As always, we would love to hear your feedback. Our contact information and social media sites are in the description. Older episodes are all freely available on YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider making a donation on Patreon or PayPal.
It is the digital version of putting change in a singer's tip jar. Any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>